Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds are go. Assembly control. Clear launch apron. Zero X moving into position. Body to two reports, all systems are go. Propellant temperatures are normal. Lock tank check and fully operation. Radio control lifting body one, about to take up launch position. Start lights are green. All radio beacons are go. Countdown continues. This is the 
assembly control. The Zero X Martian excursion vehicle will be joining the main ship at zero minus five. Phase one now completed. This is assembly control closing down. Dr. Grant, Dr. Pierce, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Paul, Greg, Brad. Now, this is a tough assignment. And if this mission is successful, you will be the first men to land on Mars. This project has been the most costly yet devised by man. However, the safety of the crew and passengers still takes top priority. Now, is that clearly understood? Captain Paul Travers? Yes, sir. Space Captain Greg Martin? Yes, sir. Space Navigator Brad Newman? Yes, sir. And Dr. Grant? Yes, sir. Dr. Pierce? Yes, sir. Okay. Away you go. And good luck. Thank you, sir. Right. This is it. This is Central Control.
Gun for control from zero X. Height, 20,000 feet. Airspeed, Mach 1. Commence chemical engine countdown on green light. Roger. Back trim, Roger. Controls jammed. Jammed. We're going out of control. Base, this is zero X. Our control system is jammed. Nose is dropping. Ejecting nose cone. feet a minute. Air speed, Mach 1.4. Seconds This is Central Control. Air Sea Rescue Units immediate launch. Vector 276 magnetic, range 172 miles. Control, this is Captain Travers. We are still unable to free the control system. I'm ordering crew to eject. Repeat, eject. Roger, Zero X. Do not eject until you are at 1,000 feet. Air Sea Rescue is on its way. Flight deck to escape unit. Everyone ready, Greg? Okay, Paul. All in position. Okay, Greg. Coming back now.
Gentlemen. You've now had time to study the very fine report that has been produced by our aviation investigators. We at the Martian Exploration Center wish to thank those concerned for their untiring efforts in this direction. Although the report runs to 862 pages and meticulously describes every happening that led up to the crash 24 months ago, the conclusion is all too simple. Sabotage. Now, before we progress further with this meeting, I would ask you for a vote of confidence in the findings of this very fine report. Thank you, gentlemen, for your unanimous support. 24 months have now elapsed since the tragic crash of the Zero X. And in eight weeks' time, Earth will once again be in a suitable position in relation to Mars to make the second attempt. Can I take it that I have your approval for this, too? I think our security arrangements are inadequate and would suggest that we ask International Rescue to be present at the next launching. Are you suggesting, sir, that we are incapable of handling our own security arrangements? I have 862 pages here, sir, which say just that. Okay. Oh, well, well, no, Father? Takeoff is scheduled for tomorrow morning. You'll have to make a decision soon, Dad. Even if it's no. This is a tough one. I know how you boys feel. I guess you're raring to go. But as you know, we have a strict rule here. No international rescue craft is launched unless someone is in grave danger. Right? Right. Guess so, Dad. That's the way it's always been. Guess you're right, Dad. Yeah. However, Rules were made to be broken. Now, this is what we do. Scott? Yes, sir. Launch Thunderbird 1, proceed to Glenfield, and stand by there for the takeoff of Zero X. Yes, sir. Virgil, launch Thunderbird 2 and follow Scott to Glenfield. When Zero X takes off, escort it through the atmosphere on the first part of its journey. Yes, sir. Father, can I? Yes, you can. Launch Thunderbird 3 and orbit the Earth until Zero X has established its course to Mars. Gee, thanks, Dad. What about me, Father? Well, it's unlikely that you'll be needed, but you'd better be ready in case. Yes, sir. Okay, boys. Thunderbirds are go.
Thunderbird one. Ready to go. Okay, Scott. Clear to go. Good luck. Thanks, Father. your decision, Mr. Tracy. Yes, I only hope it was the right one. Well, I suppose now that the boys are going to be at the launching of Zero X, the safety of the crew is assured, but, but what about the saboteurs? Do you think they will strike again? I see. What's the time, Denton? The time? Well, at just about 11 o'clock, Mr. Tracy. That makes it about 4 p.m. in England, tea time. I don't understand, Mr. Tracy. Well, those saboteurs you were talking about, if they do strike again, I know just the person to take care of them. Will that be all, Milady? Thank you, Parker. That will be all. Very good, Milady. International Rescue, England. Lady Penelope speaking. Hi, Penny. Well, I've made my decision. We're going to oversee this Zero X launch. Thunderbirds 1, 2, and 3 are on their way. I want you to go to the States immediately and ensure that there's no sabotage attempt this time. FAB, Jeff. I'll fly over with Fab 1 right away. Now, I'll need to move around there freely on this type of assignment. Can you pull a few strings your end to see that I get the necessary parts? Will do, Penny. There's a big press conference tomorrow evening. You'll be representing a British magazine. FAB. You rang, belated? Yes, Parker. Get out the Rolls Royce. I'll call the airport. We're taking off for America with Fab One immediately. <laughs> Thunderbird 2 from Mobile Control, you are clear to land. 
Mobile control from Thunderbird 2, FAB. Well, I guess we're all set. By tomorrow morning, Thunderbird 3 will be in the correct orbital position to keep an eye on the launch path, and we've got all our gear here. Thanks. I guess that's all we can do for the moment. Uh, see you at the press conference tonight. Oh, no thanks. As far as we're concerned, the only good publicity is no publicity. And in conclusion, as I always say, the only bad publicity is no publicity. So have a good conference, but please be brief. Our astronauts can only spare you half an hour because, as I'm sure you are aware, they have a very busy schedule ahead of them tomorrow. Captain Paul Travers. Yes, ma'am. I'm Lady Penelope Crichton Ward, uh, representing the Universal Mirror. First question. Tell me, what do you find most frightening? Your deal at this press conference, or your flight tomorrow in Zero X? <laughs> well, without question, this press conference, ma'am. Thank you, Captain Travers. Now, I'm sending a messenger over with a small St. Christopher, specially struck for the occasion by the Universal Mirror. I would like to tell my readers that you'll be wearing it during the flight. It'll be a pleasure, Lady Penelope. That's very kind of you. Well, it looks as if my time is up. Best of luck for tomorrow. Captain Paul Travers. Package from Lady Penelope. Universal mirror, sir. All right. Well, there'll be three crew and two scientists. Right. Right again. Yep, uh, 1,400 hours tomorrow. That's right, six weeks and two days. I'm afraid I can't answer that question. I'm afraid you'll have to refer that question to the PRO. Why, sure. We'll do anything to help the press. I've got a feeling that the takeoff tomorrow is going to be just fine. minutes to lift off. Commence Zero X free flight assembly. Thunderbird 2, the mobile control. Are you ready, Virgil? Standing by, Scott. Mobile control calling Thunderbird 3. Okay, Scott, in orbit. I should be able to see Zero X as it leaves the Earth's atmosphere. Unless liftoff time is altered. FAB, Alan. Now, Milady. Now, Parker. Channel one, Milady. Good. That's all right. Shadow two, lady. Clear to launch if zero X moving into position. Shadow five, belady. Thank you, Parker. Trouble, Parker. I thought it was too good to be true, belady. 
Lady Penelope calling Scott at mobile control. Oh, what's the trouble, Lady Penelope? Number five, negative. Okay, Penelope, here's what we do. Now, whatever happens, the countdown must continue, otherwise we miss the rendezvous with Thunderbird 3 in space. I'll attend to number five. Meanwhile, locate Dr. Grant. F.E.B. This is Assembly Control. Radio Control, Assembly Body 2. About to take up. Everybody okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. Everything's just fine. And how about you, Dr. Grant? Are you okay? Now keep quite still, Doctor. There's something wrong with your face. He's coming on. I should allow yourself ten seconds before coming through this door after me. Otherwise, you might get your head blown off. I think I've located number five, belady. That's him, Parker. Well done, Penelope. Number five was a phony, all right, but he's got away. You'd better take care of him. Right, Scott. Leave it to me. But before I go, you'll find the real Dr. Grant on a bearing of 174 and a range of 1,204 yards from my present position. F.A.B. I can see the gentleman in question ahead, lady. He's just leaving the control tower in a motor car. Right, Parker. Away we go. You'll find the real Dr. Grant somewhere in this building here. Right. Airport police, this is assembly control. Search the missile store, block F, immediately, and locate the whereabouts of Dr. Grant. We don't know his condition, but providing he's okay, bring him over to central control immediately. Roger, control. Say, how do you know all this? A pretty little bird told me. He's got a good start on this lady. Yes, I can see him down below. My guess is he's making for that motorboat by the jetty. How are you feeling, Dr. Grant? I'm just fine. There was no violence. He just told me a gunpoint tied me up and locked me in the missile store. I guess it's another sabotage attempt. What beats me is how you knew where I was. Well, all you need to know right now is that everything is okay. The launch is taking place as per schedule. Okay, sir. So much for the good luck charm given to me by Lady Penelope. Safety belts on, Belaide. Safety belts on, Parker. Foils now, Blighty. If an accomplice is waiting to pick him up in that helicopter, lady. This 
to harm the helicopter, my lady. And no doubt it's heavily harmed. Well, let's hope they attack Parker. Then we may have an opportunity to shoot it down. Mobile control to Thunderbird 2, launching underway. You'd better lift off yourself. Thunderbird 2, FAB. Stand by to take evasive action, Parker. Yes, my lady. Now, my lady. Now, Parker. Just a little bit over to the right, old son. Thank you very much. I don't think there's much point in looking for survivors, Parker. No, my lady. Look, my lady. Look. What a magnificent sight. Central control from Zero X. Lift off A OK. Airspeed, Mach 1.2, rate of ascent 3,000 feet per minute. All systems are go. Height 50,000 feet, Mach 2.8. Mobile control from Thunderbird 2. I'm returning to base. Zero X is entering rarefied atmosphere and she's doing fine. In a few minutes, it'll be over to Alice. Okay, Thunderbird 2. Thunderbird 3. Can you hear me? Mobile control, I hear you. Alan, Zero X, entering rarefied atmosphere. It should be with you in approximately one minute. Right, Scott. 100,000 feet, Mach 3.2. Start countdown for chemical rocket. Commence of countdown coming up on computer. Countdown commencing now. Stand by to release lifting bodies. Standing by. Height 112,000 feet. Height 120,000 feet. Increase rate of ascent to 6,000 feet a minute. Roger. Computer reports jettison lift bodies 10 seconds. Release on green light. Roger. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Computer reports chemical rockets, five seconds. Airspeed, 3,000 knots, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. Leaving Earth's atmosphere. Computer reports jettison nose cone, 10 seconds. Roger. Central Control, this is Zero X, lifting bodies and nose cone jettison. Escape velocity reached. We are leaving Earth's atmosphere. Okay. 
switch an arc jet engine. Mobile control, this is Thunderbird 3. I can see Zero X. She's on course and accelerating to 100,000 miles per hour. Okay, thanks, Alan. You'd better return to base. FAB. International Rescue calling Zero X. May we offer our congratulations on a superb liftoff. Fortunately, our services were not required, although I can tell you now that a sabotage attempt was made just before liftoff. But we took care of it. Now I guess the rest is up to you. International Rescue from Zero X. Dr. Grant has just told us about the sabotage attempt. The only thing we really want to say is thanks. And may I add my thanks and congratulations, too. Uh, you did pretty well yourself. Mobile control from Fab One. Are we clear? Hi there, Penelope. All clear. I'm on my own. How'd it go? F-A-B. Well done, Penelope. Well, it's been a hectic time for all of us. How about us all getting together tonight over a drink? I hear there's a fab nightclub called the Swinging Star near my hotel. F-A-B? Oh, uh, hi there, Penelope. I just happen to be monitoring your frequency, and I... Uh... Well, what do you say, Virgil? Are you game? I sure am. You're going where? Ah, uh, the, uh, the, the Swinging Stars, Father. It's some kind of nightclub. Well, that means you won't be back here till morning. Sure, I understand you need a break, but this is a tough job we're doing here. Mr. Tracy, all work and no play makes Scott a dull boy. Hmm, okay then, Scott. Have a good time. Gee, thanks, Dad. I've made arrangements with Glenn Field. They'll be able to reach us by radio at any time. Now, don't forget, Dad, we'll be at the Swinging Star. All right, Scott. The Swinging Star? Yeah, that's right. It's some sort of a nightclub. They're all going out tonight to celebrate. A nightclub? And I'm stuck back here at base. Just my luck. Say, Tintin, why don't we go off to the mainland tonight? Just the two of us. Oh, that would be lovely, Alan. I'll wear my new dress. What goes on around here? Have you all gone crazy? This is international rescue, remember? We can't leave the base unmanned. Sorry, Tintin. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Tracy. I understand. Well, I don't. I'm going to bed. But won't you have some coffee, Alan? No, thanks. It keeps me awake. Penelope, you are 30 seconds late. Swinging star. Sounds great. Why, here she is. Why, hello there, Penny. 
have I kept you waiting? Of course not. You're dead on time. Where to, milady? Why, the swinging star, of course. Now, milady? Now, Parker. Why, we're flying. That's right. Turn right just past Planet Mars, and you should see the swinging star straight ahead of you, Parker. Right, Milady. There it is, Milady. Straight ahead. It's fabulous. I thought you'd like it. No parking problem here, my lady. group. Yes, they always play at the swinging star. You see, they're way out. Say, Penelope, how... How did you enjoy your night here with Scott and Virgil? Oh, we didn't come to this swinging star. Oh, really? Oh, no. This is reserved especially for you. Oh. Uh, gee. Have some more champagne. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the biggest star in the universe, none other than Cliff Richard, Jr. <laughs> You know that I got friends So baby, listen to me A shooting star will shoot you And Mars will go to war The man in the moon will jump on you If you don't love me, no Oh, I saw you in someone else's car Baby, listen to me. A shooting star will shoot you, and a Mars will go to war. The man in the moon will jump on you if you don't love me no more. You tell me that I'm the man for you, but you do things you should never do. So now. 
begin. Yes, I got friends. So baby, listen to me. A shooting star will shoot you. What an evening. It isn't over yet, Alan. The night is young. Come on, let's dance. Yeah, let's dance. Alan Tracy, International Rescue. Oh, uh, Alan, uh, sorry to disturb you, but uh, this is an emergency. Look, Father, uh, can't Scott and Virgil handle this? I'm kind of tied up right now. I'm afraid Scott and Virgil are away enjoying themselves, as usual. You are the only one I can rely on, Alan. I quite understand, Dad. I'll be down right away. F-A-B. Penelope, we've got to go. Oh, Alan, must we? Penelope, I'm afraid we must. Duty calls. But is there no way you can get out of this, Alan? Look, Penelope, Dad needs me. He's depending on me. I've just got to go. Mind the gap, my lady. Who, when you step into the car, Thank you, Parker. We don't want to fall back to Earth, do we? Mind the gap, Alan. Mind the gap, Alan. Mind the gap, Alan. I can't possibly make it. What's, What's the matter, Alan? What's, What's the, the matter, Alan? Don't, don't tell me you're afraid. I'm not afraid. A brave astronaut like you. Afraid. I am not afraid. Are you okay? Alan? Alan, where are you? Gee. S sorry, Dad. I... I guess I fell out of bed. I've had a word with Brains, and he agrees with me that this modification is possible. Right, Brains? Check. Check? What the heck are you talking about? Oh, come on, you two. The water's lovely and warm. Out of what for? At your service. Catch! Can't a guy get any peace around here? <laughs> Wish John was here to enjoy the fun. But I guess someone's got a man the space satellite. Zero X to Earth. We have just touched down successfully on the surface of Mars. All systems are go. We'll radio a full report to you in 30 minutes ground elapsed time. <laughs> no! I did Go 
ahead, John. Father, I was just listening to the Zero X transmission to Earth. They've just announced they've safely landed on Mars. Thought you'd all be interested down there to hear the news. Thanks, John. Keep in touch. FAB. Listen, everyone. Just heard from John. After six weeks in space, Zero X has safely landed on Mars. Well, Dr. Grant, what do you think? My first thought is to get as many samples back to Earth as possible so that we can look into the whole question of the possibility of life existing on this planet. Sure, but what's your initial reaction? I think the atmosphere would be breathable, but too thin to sustain life as we know it. And it looks as if the early Martian photographs are going to prove right, inasmuch as there's no water up here. And you can tell all this from your instruments, Doctor? 80% instruments, 20% intuition. I agree with all Dr. Grant has just said, but I've always been fascinated by that phrase, life as we know it. I have a feeling that we may encounter life as we don't know it. These strange formations seem to be all over this part of the planet's surface. Don't ask me why, but they worry me. Now, Ray, don't let your imagination run riot. Yeah, Tony, I know it would be all too easy to happen up here, but can you account for the strange formation of those rocks? Well, obviously, a considerable study will have to be made before we know the answer. But um, my first impression is that when the crust of the planet was very thin, it was struck by meteorites. As the meteorite punctured the shell, so the hot rock exuded onto the planet's surface, like toothpaste out of a tube. A good theory, Tony. Now explain to me how the exuding rock wrapped itself into a coil. You know, Ray, you've got a point. Now, clearly, gentlemen, this is one of the many things we have to investigate. Now, we're falling behind schedule. Can we uh, move on? Sure, Paul. Uh, sorry about that. You know, Ray, I don't like the look of these peculiar formations either. Though I'm sure they're just rot. I've been watching them very carefully. There's no sign of movement. I think we'd better take a sample back to Earth. I must say, I think that would be a wise precaution, Tony. Uh, can you break one up for us, Paul? Then I'll go out and collect some pieces. Sure. OK, Paul. Not too big a charge now. I want to get a sizable piece. OK, Ray. And Paul. Yeah? As soon as you fire, I recommend you stand by at the ready. Stand by at the ready? What for? 
I don't really know. I've just got a feeling, that's all. Right. I'll go and get my gear. Uh, Greg, get the airlock ready. Okay, sir. from MEV. We're under attack from a form of life we do not understand. Require immediate rendezvous with main body. I'm just coming around on third orbit. We'll be in rendezvous position in four minutes. Okay, Brad. We'll take evasive action down here until you're in position. Give us liftoff clearance. The second it's okay. Will do. But, Paul, we must lift off immediately. We don't know what damage these things can do to us. Take it easy, Doctor. We can't lift off until the main ship's in the correct rendezvous position. Otherwise, we'll run out of gas and be stranded in space. Turn to starboard, Greg. There's a whole line of them ahead of us. Turn their fire. We can't take too much of this punishment. Okay, Skipper. So far, all systems are go. Zero X from MEV. How are we doing, Brian? Approaching orbital position. Starting countdown now. Rendezvous liftoff minus 100. 99. 98. No choice. We're coming up. Okay, Greg, lift up. Leading atmosphere, Paul. Right. Mev from Zero X. I have you on my screen. You're approaching Zero X orbital path. Five seconds to retro firing. Four, three, two, one. Retros. Thanks, Brad. Guess we'll make it okay now. All systems here appear to be at green. Okay, Paul, stay where you are. I can serve your fuel. I'm coming up right behind you.
Well, at least the Martian excursion vehicle has joined up successfully with the main body of Zero X. These are so-called rock snakes, Father. What do you make of them? Well, clearly there's life on Mars, but I guess it's not life as we know it. So, uh, you think they'll get back okay? Well, according to the reports that John monitored in the space station, the damage to the map has not impaired their efficiency, so there shouldn't be any problems. As a matter of fact, I, um, I had a word with the controller at Glen Field this morning. He reckoned their re-entry into Earth's atmosphere will be pretty straightforward. They've done it a hundred times before on test flights. Oh. What's the scheduled date for the re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, Dan? Well, their flight takes them six weeks, so they should be arriving on the morning of September 2nd. Dr. Grant? Dr. Pierce, are you ready for re-entry? Okay, Greg, we're ready. Roger. Okay, Skipper, all set. Central Control, this is Zero X. Computer reports, fire retros, 30 seconds. Ground stations, verify computer countdown. You have our green light, five seconds. Four, three, two, one, retros. Central control from Goldston. Retro firing A OK. -okay. Zero X re entry attitude correct. Woomer at the central control. Verifying Goldstone's report. Zero X from central control. You are in correct re entry attitude and are about to enter Earth's atmosphere. Roger, central control. Retros. Zero X from central control. Lifting bodies now at 50,000 feet. Radio control over to you in five seconds. Four, three, two, one, over. Okay, Paul, we've got the lifting bodies under our own radio control now. Roger. Rendezvous with lifting bodies at 120,000 feet, 20 seconds. Reduce speed to Mach 2. Rendezvous about to take place. Roger. Steady, Skipper. I'm bringing in lift body two. Roger. Keep her steady, Skipper. Radio control failure. I can't hold her. What happened? Central Control, this is Zero X. Emergency. We have lost lift body two following a collision. Caused by a fault in our remote radio control unit. Roger, Zero X. I'm sending up another lift body immediately. That won't help us, I'm afraid. The locking gear was damaged in the collision. Check on all systems. Show fuel systems go. All control systems go. Remote control radio circuits are dead. Escape unit is... 
Central control from Zero X. Escape unit circuits are dead. Okay, John, I get the picture. Continue to monitor their frequency. FAB. Right. Now we gotta move fast. Zero X is coming in on one wing. Due to damage, it's impossible to get another wing attached. She's unable to maintain height and will crash in approximately 30 minutes. The most recent check of the control systems aboard shows that they have an escape unit failure. Unless we can get the crew and passengers out before that aircraft hits the ground, they are all doomed men. Okay, Scott, you know what to do. Take brains with you. You'll need technical advice. Yes, sir. Okay, Virgil, take pod four with the air-to-air -air rescue equipment and rendezvous with Zero X. Yes, sir. Alan? Yes, sir. I want you to board the Zero X and fix that hatch. Yes, sir. Father... Yes, Gordon, you'll be needed, too. Off you go. Yes, sir. Tintin, I'll want your help. Thunderbirds are go. Maximum speed, Scott. We're gonna need all the time we've got. Mm -hmm. Zero X from Central Control. What is your rate of descent now, and what is your airspeed? Rate of descent stabilized at 3,000 feet a minute. Airspeed, Mach 1.2. We can't slow the rate of descent. The motors are flat out. Over. Zero X, Roger. Stand by. Emergency control, this is central control. Contact Washington immediately. Zero X crash position, established as Craigsville, population 4,800. Impact time, 35 minutes, so you'll need to move. International rescue, Zero X central control here. This is an emergency. Central control, this is international rescue, Thunderbird 1. Anticipated your call, we're on our way. ETA Glenfield, 10 minutes. Will you give Thunderbird 2 a course to steer for a rendezvous with Zero X? They're on this frequency. Roger. Thunderbird 2 from Central Control have been requested to pass a steer to you. Zero X's present position is International Fix System 2404 on a heading of 143 magnetic. Roger, Central Control. I've tried everything in the book, but the escape unit system is dead. If only International Rescue had been with us this time, they might have come up with something. Zero X, this is Central Control. Change to Channel 4. International Rescue are on their way, and they require to make contact with you. Is that understood? Yes, sir, that's understood. Changing to Channel 4. Gee, I'll be glad when Scott's got his mobile control operating. We'll need his assistance in locating the Zero X. He must be getting pretty close by now. I'd better get my rescue gear on. Right. Gordon, you better get off the Astrodome. Okay, Virgil. Zero X, this is International Rescue, mobile control. Can you hear me? Over. International Rescue, this is Zero X. Yes, we can hear you, loud and clear. Zero X and Thunderbird 2 from mobile control. Transmit 10 seconds of unmodulated carrier wave on this frequency. One at a time, please. Zero X. Zero X, roger. Thunderbird 2. Roger, Thunderbird 2. Thunderbird 2 from mobile control. Steer 002. Zero, zero, Fly at 45,000 feet. With your present airspeed, you should sight zero X in approximately four minutes. Roger, will do. What do you intend to do? Well, we hope to put a man aboard zero X. And if we succeed, we may be able to fix the escape unit. Excuse me. 
Zero X. This is mobile control. Mobile control, this is Zero X. Now, here are your instructions. They must be followed precisely if we're to succeed in rescuing you. Okay, go ahead. There are approximately 15 minutes left before your aircraft crashes. And for the next 10 minutes, lose as little height as you possibly can. Keep your aircraft steady. Watch the trim. In precisely 10 minutes from now, switch to automatic pilot and go together with your passengers into the escape unit. And then pray. In the meantime, take further instructions from the pilot of Thunderbird 2. Mobile control, this is Zero X. Your instructions have been received and will be complied with. Thanks. What are they going to do? Maybe we'll learn more when Thunderbird 2 makes contact with us. Scott, I can see it. Alan, Gordon, stand by. Zero X, dead ahead. FAB, Virgil. Zero X, this is Thunderbird 2. We're coming in below you. Reduce speed to low safe cruising and lower nose landing gear. We're going to put a man aboard and attempt to fix the escape unit. So that's what they're going to try to do. Suicide. Release air brakes, Greg. Right. Lower nose wheel, Greg. Thunderbird 2, this is Zero X. Lowering nose wheel. Are you sure you want to try this? It sounds mighty dangerous to me. It is mighty dangerous, and we do want to try it. Now hold it steady. Gordon? Flight control, over and in. Okay, Virgil. Left, left, one degree. Right, right, two degrees. Right, Virgil. Stand by to hold position. Okay, Gordon. How are you doing, Thunderbird 2? Fine. Just keep steady, that's all. Slow right down. And stop. Give me a time check, Gordon. You've got four and one half minutes. Mobile control from Allen. Okay, Brains. On the right of the master cylinder, that supplies power to the hydraulic system of a nose wheel, you will find a yellow wiring harness. Follow this through to a red junction box marked E-U-C. Got it. Doctors Grant and Pierce, hold tight. I'm removing you to escape unit. Okay, Paul. transistorized radio induction unit on the side of the junction box. Okay, Brains. Right, Alan. Now, all you have to do is remove the screws that are anchoring the yellow and green lines and reconnect them on one block so we get a direct link. Green to yellow all the way down the bank. Okay, Brain. Time check, please. 
two and one quarter minutes. Right. I'm sending you both back to the escape unit. Right, sir. Switching to automatic pilot. No, no, don't switch to the automatic pilot. I'm staying here. I'll come back when we're at zero feet. That guy's risking his life down there, and it's the least I can do. I'll stay with you. Me too. No. There won't be time for us all to get into the escape unit at the last moment. I'm sending you two back now, and that's an order. Yes, sir. Good luck, Paul. Zero X from Thunderbird 2. Are you all in escape unit? Thunderbird 2 from Zero X. All in escape unit, except me. I can do better than the automatic pilot in holding this craft steady. I'll go back into the escape unit either when it's fixed or when we're at zero feet. It'll help. Thanks. You won't be able to make it in time, surely. Well, they're all running out of time up there. How are you doing, Alan? OK. How much time have I got? One minute. Alan isn't through yet, and we're dangerously near the ground. Play out more cable. I'm coming alongside Zero X. Okay, Virgil. Glenfield, this is Washington. Evacuation of Craigsville is now complete. Thunderbird 2 from Zero X. Is he through yet? No, not yet. I'm going to overrun my engines. It'll give us a few more seconds. Thunderbird 2. Into escape hatch immediately. Alan for Virgil. Jump it in the five second countdown. Five. Four. Are you okay, Alan? Okay, Verge. Did they make it? This is Thunderbird 2 calling 0X escape unit. Are you okay? Thunderbird 2 from 0X escape unit. Yes, we are okay. Paul only just made it. He's badly shaken up. But he's gonna be all right. Did you hear that, Alan? I heard. Did you hear that, Central Control? We heard. Well done. Virgil from Gordon. We can't retrieve Alan. Due to his hurried departure, the cables are now fouling the side of Thunderbird 2. We'd better drop him to the ground. 
F.A.V. Gordon. Say, Virgil, I think that's Fab One below. Thunderbird Two from Fab One. Virgil, we're down below. Why not drop Alan down here? Yeah, Penelope, I can see you. Say, how did you get here? As soon as we heard the forecast crash position, we made our way here. Okay, I'm down. Cable released. Gee, it, it sure was swell of you to come here and pick me up, Penelope. After that brilliant performance, I think that's the least you deserve. Now jump in. I assume, madam, that the first call will be glad filled and then hot to your hotel. Is that correct? That, Parker, is quite correct. Gee, you mean you're going to take me to the Swinging Star? Just the two of us? Just the two of us. It's like a dream come true. This must be the most memorable day of my life. You know, Penelope, I'm always treated like a kid back at the base. You know, being the youngest and all. But tonight, being alone with you, I feel like a real grown man. But you are, Alan. You are. Particularly with that snazzy mustache you're wearing. It adds years to you, Alan. Well, uh, you see, we have to wear a disguise sometimes when we're out in public, in case we're recognized. Do you really think it suits me? Oh, excuse me, Alan. I think the gentleman on the next table wants something. Hmm? Would you mind passing that ashtray? Disguise. Pretty good, eh? Why, Dad, what are you doing here? Just thought I'd come along and congratulate you on your great performance today, boy. Me too, Alan. A great job. Scott! Thanks to you, Alan, another international rescue success. Verge, who else is here? And I think it was a splendid effort. I, I really do, even though I can't see you. Thanks, Brains. And I guess the little lady with you must be Tintin. Yes, Alan, congratulations on your performance today. And tonight. <laughs> and there was I, thinking we were all alone. Remember, Alan, one of the most comforting feelings a man can have in this world of ours is never to be alone. To Alan, the hero of the day. To, to Alan. Alan.